55% of Americans in 2023 stated that they wanted to relocate. And the YouTube channel Across the Globe did a top 10 states to choose from and live in in 2024. So today we are going to do a response video to that because Colorado came in number 10. And recently I did a best states video and a lot of the things that they looked at, a lot of the rankings, Wallet Hub and different CNBC rankings were similar to what I use. So today I'm going to respond to some of the comments that this video, this YouTube channel made so that if you're considering making a move in 2024 and Colorado is on your list, this is the Living in Fort Collins YouTube channel where we talk to you about everything there is to know about Fort Collins, Northern Colorado, which is probably one of the more desired spots in Colorado, which ranked number 10 for best places to live in 2024. My name is Patrick Sukup. And again, this is the Living in Fort Collins YouTube channel. If you're considering a move or relocation, give us a call, text or email. We are licensed real estate agents in the state of Colorado. Without any further delay, let's jump into today's response video. Colorado recently has placed well on several lists of best places to live in America. And when you look at this state's numerous outdoor recreation activities, strong economy and cultural opportunities, it's pretty clear why. So outdoor activities, strong economy, economy and cultural activities. Definitely one of the main reasons that people move here to Colorado is the quality of life, getting more outdoors and enjoying that lifestyle, hiking, biking, skiing, getting outdoors, enjoying the rivers, rafting, things like that. Economy, definitely a strong economy in Boulder, Denver, Fort Collins is kind of this fledgling tech scene, Colorado Springs with the Air Force Academy. Definitely different economies all across the, the state. Weld County is probably one of the wealthiest counties, very strong oil and gas. It's always interesting to see Weld County stacked up right next to Larimer County and Boulder County because there's kind of a strong line of oil wells and not in Boulder County and Weld County. The quality of life in Colorado is pretty high, whether you're an individual or have a family. For starters, it's known as a very inclusive state Inclusive state. That's definitely something that I've seen here in Colorado. Generally speaking, people are pretty open and willing to accept anybody and everybody. You know, me personally, I have the don't be an asshole rule. And hopefully that kind of portrays itself throughout the state of Colorado. But generally speaking, I tell people there's 10% on each side. You know, there's 10% that are just going to be kind of crazy on one side and 10% that's going to be crazy on the other side. But we like to live in that 80% kind of medium. According to data analyzed by CNBC, when it comes to families, Colorado has the fourth highest number of childcare services out of any other state in the country, with 55 facilities for every 100,000 people. That's kind of interesting because I think recently we felt that the child care facilities, especially like kind of pre-K, kindergarten and pre-K, have become a little bit more difficult to get into so that you actually have to get on a list three, four, six months, a year in advance if your toddler is coming to an age where they need to get into school. But coming in fourth, having 55 out of, you know, uh, you know, ranking well for childcare facilities, definitely an interesting stat from my perspective, at least in Fort Collins, we never had an issue of getting our kids into kind of a pre-K or childcare facility, daycare, anything along those lines. So we didn't have that issue, but we have had friends and family that have had issues that maybe needed to sign up way in advance to get into those facilities. Its economy and education and healthcare services are in a strong place. On WalletHub's list of the best and worst states to live in America, Colorado placed number 10 for both economy, education, and healthcare, and overall quality of life. Economy, healthcare, education, education, obviously Denver University, Colorado College, CSU, CU, Mesa State, Western State, lots of different opportunities for education here, whether you're wanting to go to Front Range Community College, Ames Community College, Front Range Community College, or, you know, go to more of a kind of a tier one type university like Colorado University or Denver University or Colorado State University plenty of educational opportunities. I'm not even talking about University of Northern Colorado, which is also a division one school for its sports. You know, University of Northern Colorado, Greeley has 100,000 plus people living there. Healthcare, healthcare is definitely something that there is a strong, at least presence in Fort Collins, Banner Health, UC Health, Kaiser Permanente is here, but for, we have Medical Center of the Rockies, we've got 
Anschutz, Colorado Children's Hospital, plenty of healthcare options and feeling of safety. Now, these kind of focus along the front range. So if you do get out to the Eastern Plains, my sister, you know, she lives in Haxton, Colorado. So when they were going to have a baby, they needed to go to Sterling, which is also still just a very, very small hospital. But as long as you're kind of staying along that front range, your medical choices and opportunities and healthcare system is extremely strong. And US News and World Report ranked it number three, four, and 13 for economy, education, and healthcare, respectively. In terms of things to do, there are plenty of outdoor opportunities in Colorado. Here, there are 42 state parks where you can do everything from whitewater rafting, horseback riding, hiking, fishing, skiing, and more. This is again, probably the number one reason why people are moving to Colorado. Just the extreme amount of outdoor activities, trails, biking, the focus to on health and getting outdoors and engaging. Now, we do have four seasons here in Colorado, so you may not necessarily get out to as much during the winter, but people, if they really engage in and enjoy skiing and, and snowboarding, that fourth season, that winter time period could be something that you actually look forward to. Going to Steamboat, Keystone, Breckenridge, Vail, Copper, Winter Park, at A Basin, you know, there's plenty of opportunities for skiing, world-class skiing. And then during the spring, summers, horseback riding, hiking, just an hour north of Fort Collins, and really, even Denver, if you're heading east, or sorry, west, you can get to the mountains extremely quickly to Copper Vale within a couple hours. And you're just world-class mountain biking, outdoor recreation and activity. So that again is probably the biggest driver of people moving to Colorado. And again, it's really focusing along that front range. We just did a, a video that talked about the population and population expectations in Colorado over the next 30 years. And currently where the focus is of job, migration, people moving in and out and it's really focused along that front range. So if you're looking outside of that, kind of the Western Slope or Eastern Plains, you would definitely want to look to see what is the motivating factor to be there and how long of a drive you're willing to, to have and do. But the outdoor activity, things to do in Fort Collins, Colorado, Denver, Colorado Springs, there's just no shortage of activities outdoor. And if you're concerned about making new friends to enjoy these activities with, you'll be happy to know that Colorado is one of America's friendliest states, ranked seven by Enjoy Travel. Definitely something that I've uh, really lived my life by. And it's, in fact, we had some clients and now friends that moved here from California. And there was a, a comment that was made that there was a, a person who moved into the neighborhood. They kind of were driving pretty fast, but they were respectful. When my, my kid was kind of crossing the street, they stopped. I waved and they didn't wave back and it really, really rubbed me the wrong way. And so I told these friends from California, I said, you know, th these individuals, we kind of have some theories about them in the, in the neighborhood, but you know, deal your drugs, sir, or uh, do your thing at your house, whatever that is. But in this state, we wave. And it's kind of a running joke now with those friends of mine, but really that is kind of the commonality that people move here or people come visit and they just can't stop raving about how friendly Colorado is. There's always gonna be kind of those outliers. Again, the 10 to 20, the 10% on each side still same is the same thing about people who are friendly. There might be just somebody who's having a bad day or just a jerk in general that you unfortunately come across while you're at the grocery store, at the convenience store, at the, the coffee shop that just isn't very nice, or they see your license plate that says Texas or Florida or New York, New Hampshire, wherever those license plates are from. And they're like, where are you from and why are you here? But generally speaking, people are pretty welcoming, pretty engaging, which is kind of goes by that ranking coming in number seven most friendly estate in the United States. I will note though that Colorado can be expensive placing 28th in terms of affordability on WalletHub's list. However, it's definitely not the most expensive state to live in the country. So yes, it is more expensive to live here in Colorado, especially along that front range. Boulder is a complete outlier, about double, triple what you'd find in Fort Collins, Colorado Springs, and Denver, but it is an extremely desirable place to live. Very beautiful, gorgeous. Housing prices are astronomical, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Fort Collins, Denver, and Colorado Springs aren't seeing price increases as well. We've seen some stabilization over the last year and a half of prices. so. That's kind of been nice, interest rates have increased so that our affordability factor for living here 
cost of living, but we do have some good property taxes. You can see about a percent versus Texas has 3% of the property value and property taxes. The Midwest, kind of Ohio, Chicago area, um, Illinois, their property taxes are much higher or insurance. Our insurance here is really pretty strong, especially comparatively to kind of that rust belt where there's a lot of tornadoes or in Florida where they're defending against hurricanes. Groceries, gas, really all of our other ancillary life expenses, our utilities are very good, not too bad, I should say. And But our housing costs do are a heavily weighted factor, especially when people pay about 30 to 40% of their gross income on housing for themselves. That's such a big portion of their monthly expense. It is weighted pretty heavily. So our housing costs are high, but um, some ancillary expenses aren't too crazy. So that is absolutely something that you're gonna have to address. And you might find that the benefits found here are enough to offset the cost of living. There we go, I agree. I, I think that the majority of people who are moving here, they aren't moving here anymore for the cost of living. It used to be that Colorado, Fort Collins, these areas might be really uh, an affordable place to move that is also gorgeous, wonderful to live. Now the people who are generally moving here and wanting to live here are just like, hey, we get that it's gonna be a little bit more expensive than say Indiana or Iowa or Nebraska, but it's not a sedentary lifestyle. We found ourselves inside, we're done with the humidity. We don't want the kind of hustle and bustle of a big metro. We are going to move to somewhere in Colorado and focus on our health, our outdoor lifestyle. We know that we're gonna to have to spend a little bit more on our housing, but the benefits outweigh the costs. Alrighty, so there is the response video from the YouTube channel across the globe. And we definitely see Colorado continually ranking on these top places to move to and places to live in. And, you know, we'll see as that goes, you know, we see population growth expecting to continue to grow um, in Colorado, especially along that front range, like I spoke to you about. And hopefully we can kind of maintain these huge and, and wonderful qualities of Colorado, of our outdoor lifestyle, our quality of life, our education, our economy, and those things that really help benefit and boost Colorado's rankings. But if you're considering a move or relocation in 2024, give me, my team, a call, text, or an email. We would love to help you. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, comment. It would really, really help us if you guys are, are definitely watching these uh, videos and getting and help and benefit from them, help me out by giving it a thumbs up or a comment. Appreciate you guys. Until next time, take care.